Welcome back everyone, Jose to No One Crisis here. Today we're playing some more Grand Prix World 2001. Don't worry, F1 Challenge will return soon. I I will publish a, a, a little publication on YouTube about why I have not done F1 Challenge yet. And on Twitter. And on Blue Sky, but stand by for a moment. So, last time around we had some fun adventures with our new upgrade around Spain and on Monaco. Monaco nearly goes out pretty well, but not enough people DNF. So, what we're going to do this time, we are going to review what it did in between episodes. So, first things first, I fixed both cars, and after that, I did some testing. 144 miles of testing, full on emphasis on research, 100% for everyone, and that gave us the full research bar which we desperately need. After that, I went over here and put 57 points on the 2003 chassis, which we really need to fill up. 43% uh, on the 2002 high uh, on the tray, which should be finished after the Canadian Grand Prix. And we have that research bar so that we can speed up the wind tunnel testing and get that new part for the French Grand Prix. Technology, we're still working on the suspension, it will be done, and driving aid, we're still working on the power brakes. I still have not built the level 1 automatic gears, but that's because I need to build spares, which we have none of. After that, I said, uh, yeah, this remained the same, I don't really care about Asia Tech enough to uh, put some people in, let's, let's wait until PS, nah, let's, let's just, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's maybe, if we get Asia Tech happy, they won't be as upset with us, and they maybe, maybe it's less cost to the engines. But anyway, 6% uh, here on Lucky Strike, and the more important thing is, I put 52% on, I will come back to North Hill. 1% uh, on those I'm not really negotiating right now. 26% uh, on Loctite, that should let us uh, fill up Oh jeez, electricity, don't do that to me. Uh, that should let us fill up one block, and then 52% for two blocks on Nortel Networks. Why am I focusing on the one-year deal Nortel Networks? Simply because Bobby Broccoli's documentary about Nortel is great, and it gave us this awesome image of John Roth. And for that reason alone, I'm going to try to get that Nortel deal done. But anyway, I don't think I did anything else. We, of course, don't have setup points to use for this one. For this one, I'm going to be bringing soft tires. I will have Alonso on the... Sure, let's put him on the two-stop, that's safer. And Bernoldi on the one-stop. As for orders, I have not said anything yet. I will set things when the race comes. Confirm everything, although there's not much to change here. Oh, look, I think looking for power brakes has not worked at all. Anyway, let's save and sure, let's get in there. Ah, uh, the Canadian Grand Prix. I remember that time, I think it was in the in the original series, back at the block, where I forgot Canada existed for the very first season. <laughs> Good job, me. So, 25 degrees, very dry and average wind speed, that will be okay. I forgot to mention, we have a massive grip penalty, a grip penalty for this one because of our high pitch sensitivity, but that will be fixed for future Grand Prix. Everyone on softs, and time to qualify. Hopefully we get a decent result. We have subs. We should get a decent result today. Something new and exciting has happened. Mika Hakkinen, remember his Mika Hakkinen and has put it on the pole with a 19-0. And then you have Mark Weber of Benetton and Barry Kello of Williams. Second and third, 19-2 for each. Then you have the Ferraris, Fisichella and Michael, 19-2 and 19-4 for Michael. For once, Michael Schumacher is not on the pole, and for once, Ferrari is not on the front row at all. That's new and exciting. 
After the Michael, you have Raikkonen, Panis, Coulthard, Tarson Marquez, Jan Alesi. Marquez just destroyed Alesi on this one. Three tenths. You have then Fernando Alonso, Stefan Sarazan, Enrique Bernoldi, and Juan Montoya, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Alonso beats Bernoldi, which means he's going to be on the two-stopper, as intended. Saracen beats Montoya, which is unexpected. Here is the rest of them. You have Irvine, Matsakane, Schumacher, Trulli, Frensen, Verstappen, Bur uh, Button, and Bertie. Not a good look. At the very least, we're ahead of the Jordans in terms of performance. But I'm afraid that McLaren, Benetton, and Williams might have brought upgrades. I will confirm this when I can. That is when I can see the graph with the performance uh, changes. Uh, let's see. 17 degrees. Very dry and unfortunately high wind speed. For us with uh, under tray issues, high wind speed is very bad. But we're going to have to cope. Nothing to change here. We don't have any other engine. I will appreciate more engines. So, put tire set 5, tire set 6, and tire set 7. No, don't put inters. Mm, put 26 laps of fuel. Actually, put 25. And 19 laps in the final stint. Bernoldi on his part is going to be running a one stop. I think the one stop in theory, the one stop is faster, but the penalties for fuel on this particular track are kind of hefty. But then again, you want to be uh, in the pits the least amount of times because you know our pit crew isn't perfect. Two stops for Alonso, one stop for Bernoldi. This should work. This should work. Go ahead and save the game because I'm not gonna do quali ever again. Or well, I'm not gonna do quali again, not for this race. And let us just hope that both of our men can hold on to their position at least. They're gonna drop like three, four placers or something. And okay, Alonso dropped a place. And he recovers it. Now start blocking. Bernoldi does drop a place. Um, Mika Hakkinen does hold on to the lead. Looks like the Michael got a masterful start. Is he second? He might be second. Let's drop the acceleration as usual. I cannot jack up uh, braking too much on this one because if I had it over five or something like that, the brakes will die. And I don't want the brakes dying. We're going to be putting it on one as per usual because I want the brakes to last till the end of the race. Bernoldi is just dropping places because he's, he's heavy with fuel. Okay, time to start pushing the brakes because I can push the brakes on this first lap as long as I drop it back to one by the end of it as per usual. Here's the driver orders, by the way. Of course, one acceleration for maximum tire saving, braking. It's gonna be one again for tire saving. Top speed seven, curb usage to five. The boys can cope with five on this racetrack. And off racing line to eight because the suspension can actually hold on to uh, not explode with it, with it on eight. Time to start lowering braking so that the brakes make it to the end. And now, boys. Decent start, Alonso held on to, this, to his place, Bernoldi did drop, but it is okay for start. I just need Bernoldi to keep up with the arrows of that, of Ralph, so that he can overtake him later on the stops. I'm gonna cut it here and report back to you when interesting stuff happens. I don't know, the Michael DNF and also, speaking of the Michael and Fisichella, look at that, uh, not only is Michael Schumacher second, look there he is. Uh, David Coulthard is fourth. He's actually fourth. He dropped behind Fisichella. But, you know, this is... <laughs> it was the usual side uh, around the around 2099, but... You know, Benetton, Sauber, Williams, I thought it would be stronger. They aren't, and, and Alonso dropped a place. Anyway, I'll see you later.
Does rain again? I, I, I. Okay, in Canada, rain is pretty, pretty common in this game. But Jesus Christ, can we have an episode without rain? Can can it happen? Because it's happening all the time. Anyway, I got some bit of news. Over here is Mika Hagenen. He is tree stopping, which is stupid, which means our pole sitter is not going to win the race. In other news, why is Giancarlo Fisichella uh, tree stopping? I mean, uh, Alonso is not going to jump ahead. He's just too far back, I think. Yeah, it, it, it was not going to happen. But why is he tree stopping? Why are you doing this to yourself? Anyway, it, to me, it's clear that the one stop, at least on our current car, it's not good enough because Bernoldi has just lost the plot. And pit stop times are just not that long in this track. So, you know, you learn that strikes don't work. In real life, I think one stop is pretty common. Why are you stopping this early? Why would you do this? But anyway, um, clearly one stop is not quite working here. Anyway, I'll see you later. Most like Why? I'll see you later when the rain fully hits. Or when Alonso has to pit one of them. A while ago, John Lacey was leading the Canadian Grand Prix. Go John. But uh, he had to pit. So now he's here, way away from the lead. And up next is... Alonso's pit stop, and as usual, I'm scared because our pit crew can screw it up. And then there's this VAR that hasn't pit. I'm just hoping for the best. Oh yeah, Barrichello and Marquez are fighting for the lead right now. Let's see who else is around here. Let's go. Um, Mark Weber over here. I think he's the 23. Yeah, he had a terrible stop. He is a uh, one uh, two stopping. But their guys put down terrible stops, which means he lost a ton of track position. Uh, sad, hours, sad hours for them. He was actually fighting for the lead. Not anymore. Alonso had, uh, got a good stop. I, <laughs> I, I, I touched wood, and it, and it gave us good luck. Anyway, I will let things flow, uh, keep going. Unless, I don't know, the Michael DNFs and I have to report that. I doubt that'll happen. Uh, track's getting wet, which sadly, uh, had we gone on a one-stop, both of us, we wouldn't have had to pit if it was going to get wet. But, um, I mean, maybe we will not have lost that much track position anyway. Uh, I don't know where I was I going with that. The point is, maybe we'll have to do another stop if we were one stopping when the wet period came. But if the wet period doesn't come, which could very well happen, we'd have to pit anyway. Uh, the point is, I'm trying to defend the one stop, but it, it just isn't there. I'll see you later. So, that's a blue flag. Sunny. So, all my rant about having to pit... When the wet weather came, it it amounted to nothing. The only thing we'll do is when track dryness goes to 5, then track temperature is going to go to 5, and we're going to lose grip, so lap times will be a bit slower. I'm not sure that benefits us, but it's a thing that happens. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Tarso Marquez is leading the race. And since he's on a one-stop, Tarso Marquez is likely to win this race. Let that sink in. It is time. First of all, let me show you something real quick. In lap 19 and lap 20, Alonso Proof is extremely consistent. But anyway, it is now time for Bernoldi to pit. He still has two blocks of a tire condition, but... He doesn't have any more fuel, so he has to stop now. Orders are okay. Come on, man, let's let's service your car. I mean, Bernoldi's race is, is screwed because of the pit stops, but... Bernoldi, you are such an unlucky man. 
uh, today. Thank you. What can I do, man? It's, it's, it's not my fault. I deliberately sent you on a one-stop so that you did not have those issues, but then you have those issues. I mean, I do my best, but, but stuff happens. Anyway, I'm going to give Alonso some breaking for the purpose of overtaking all of this traffic here. Over here is, I think that's Montoya. No, it's Saracen. Montoya is all the way over here. Uh, Alonso had been trapped behind a minority who simply did not want to get out of the way. Can you please get out of the way? I swear this AI. Uh, well, the under tray issue is actually making it more difficult to overtake cars. So it's not all of the fault of the AI. It's some, some of our car issues. We're going to fix that for France. So don't worry. I'll see you later when Alonso has to make his pit stop. Okay, I actually did not start recording from the god damn it from the beginning of the lap for the simple reason that I was scared of uh, Saracen pitting with Alonso, but I think now that will have been preferable because that pit stop was tragic. Spent like freaking 10 seconds there. 16 Jesus Christ. Oh pit crew, when will you stop doing this much harm to me? Sure, now you just have to let uh, the front run. Okay, um, those Jordans are there. So if, um, Michael, could you please hurry up and overtake me? So I can, I, uh, you know, engage the blocking order. Come on, Michael. Thank you. Okay, engage the blocking order. Because I do not want number 20 uh, Irvine to pass me. There goes a lazy in the pits, he's not gonna compete for this win. Actually, who's gonna compete for this win? I did not do the half race report, but we have the closing the closing race report. Giancarlo Fisigel is leading from Mark Weber and Kimi Raikkonen, followed by Michael Schumacher, David Kulhar, and Tarso Marquez. Uh who has to pit? Michael already pit. Fisigel already pit, so he's looking strong for the win. Let go of that McLaren, please. Let go of the McLaren. Uh, Raikkonen is not winning this race. Tarzan Marquez might well get a podium if stuff happens. Uh, Mika Hakkinen just... Remember who Mika Hakkinen is in 2001. And uh, just paid him. Here he is. And here is the race leader. Jesus Christ, just let him through. Thank you. And keep blocking because I don't want to be... I don't want to take the L from the Jordans. Do not take the L from the Jordans. Who else do we have? So it's Fisichella, Schumacher, Coulthard, Marquez, Barrichello, Weber. Then you have Alesi, Raikkonen, Panis, Montoya, and Hakkinen in 11. Saracen 12. We will not catch him again. We were in front of him uh, earlier. I think Saracen is one stop. We were in front of him with Alonso, but uh, it's not going to happen. I'm going to have to increase right i'm going to increase break into three so that Irvine doesn't pass us i think here in canada there are not that many dnfs or maybe there will be dnfs in like like lap 65 but i doubt it'll happen uh anything else notable no i think pretty much everyone brought upgrades we're only going to be saved in france where our own upgrades hit so there's that. I'll see you later, probably when the race ends. Okay, last lap of the Grand Prix, and our leader goes by the name of Giancarlo Fisichella. He has not been stopped all race. It looked like me dire in the middle of it, but you know, he got it done. What did you pass? Okay, Alon Alonso, please get it done. Dispose of Saracen, please. Take the position that rightly belongs to you. And Bernaldi can't do nothing. He is going to be 12. He's going to finish 12. Giancarlo Fisichella is going to win the Canadian Grand Prix, followed by David Coulthard and Michael Schumacher. This championship is more interesting than I thought. You know what? And if it can remain interesting like that, 
I, 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 I liked it. I would prefer everyone to just fall off a cliff and let us win a few races, but that's just not going to happen. We're going to have to take that by force. Uh, we'll, we'll catch him. We'll catch him. I hope. And if it's not this year, then it has to be next year. But the positive is we're going to get an upgrade soon. And by soon, I mean next race. So, Fisichella wins this race from Kulhar, Schumacher, Alessi, who at a point was leading this race, is now fourth. Barrichello finishes fifth, and Raikkonen fin uh, gets a point at sixth. Tarso Marquez, who was on a one stop, ended up blowing it, his seventh. Tannis, the first of the Benettons, who actually were pretty strong in qualifying, is now eighth. Montoya finishes ninth, uh, better than his teammate Saracen. Then you have Hakkinen at 10th, Weber 11th, and finally Alonso at 12th. Uh, Irvine Saracen and Matakan in 13, 14, and 15. 16 Bernoldi, which, I mean, do you want the good news? The good news are within a DNF, and we're only one lap down. So, yeah, there's that. That's about it. Michael Schumacher, at the very least, is still leading this championship, but now behind are both Kulhar and Fisichella tied for points. Then you have Hacking and Lacey and Barrichello rounding out the top six. Here's the rest of them on single digits too. Uh, of course, Ferrari is still leading this championship and they're probably going to win this championship overall. Then you have McLaren and then Sauber. And you have Williams, Bennett and BAR on single digit points, but that's about it. Okay, time to check the news. Let's see the damages that this race did to us. Profit, of course, that's 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 good. That's the whole reason why I stopped building the factory, so we can get profits. Start working in commercial, we need that. Staff workers, demoralize or designers, no problem with that. We're not gonna have any more stars for now. Uh, ready to upgrade this year's car, and we will construct those parts as soon as we can. Uh, not the driving aids, but the actual components. You're right, we should use the research. This is just the drivers moaning but that I can't do much. Some spares, and I know we need to build some more spares. We have received new improved tires for more tire sponsor. We're gonna check that in a moment. We got a TV advantage, that's really good to know. We are the worst manager. Uh, I don't care. Uh, HP, goodbye. Loctite, Nortel, LG, General Electric. Okay, Loctite and Nortel, if everything goes right, we're gonna be able to sign by the end of this episode. If not, then I'm gonna find someone else. Uh, hospitality, I don't really care. I don't really care about licensing. I know I didn't assign set of points. I told you, good news. Both of our cars are, both, uh, our cars are reliable, both of them. And yeah, disastrous speed stops, whatever. Oh yeah, right. Physical's first win ever. In real life, it happened at Brazil in 2003 after uh, shenanigans. Rightfully won that race. Uh, Hakkinen got that pole, but he leclerc it. Uh, Ferrari, both drivers on the podium. HP, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the problem this year, and it's rumored to be looking for new drivers. I do not know where those rumors came from. It's not from us. Williams on the top six, good job. Of course, they are concerned, but that's, that's just what it is. Williams in the partnership with Cosworth. Hopefully it works out, works out for you. McLaren has Ekren Sammy, Steve Giles joins Sauber. Locked will not. Jesus Christ. Another will. Uh, for, no, that for Lacey. Mm. Tons of sponsorship news. No, it is not my time to go. This, stick to the plan, stick to the process. It will work out. I could look for power brakes on the Ferraris, but I'm pretty sure that's not gonna work out. So we have 4.1 mil in hand. Let's see, in commercial. I need to fill up the commercial department, like 100% fill it up. No more staff to hire, it's not a big deal. Um, over here, can I get more? No. Move one to here and move one to here. Engineering, can we get more personnel? Just one trainee, got it. Good. Uh, mechanics. Two here. 
two here, two here. And that will include, increase the quality of our mechanics for future episodes. Okay, what do we need to build? We need to... I was hoping for a bit more, but... Yeah, that, 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 that I guess I'll do. Let's burn that research. Construct that component, that should give us uh, 4%? 5%, okay. Uh, that missing model design point, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. We're gonna build the 2002 chassis component, and we're gonna build at least two spare parts. We're actually gonna build three. Three spare, wait. And yeah, uh, qualify that suspension where I don't think we're gonna build any more technology. We're gonna focus on everything else. Hopefully we can get some power breaks eventually. And I think I will accumulate research, fill up the design bar, and that will be it for the design. Uh, but now I'm wondering, do I build this pair? Let me actually just burn that. Burn that. Do I build a spare part? Do I upgrade the technology or do I get automatic gears? I don't really mind about automatic gears. What's the cheapest? I'm not gonna build another car. I'm gonna build another spare part. And we're gonna keep that in storage. I will do my usual calculations to know how much setup, development, research, and miles I will need to do. Uh, yeah, card number one. Hopefully this is less than 140 miles, otherwise, like, I'm gonna have to build another car. Or, of course, I could just do this. And get just 50. Sure, let's do that. We're gonna get just 52% to do everything. I'm gonna have to do, like, 200 miles, but the where... I'm gonna be able to use card three for future test, uh, card one for future uh, testing. Okay, what's next? I need to. Uh, I could go for orange, but I'm not gonna do that. Hmm. Yeah, I need four people. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to 26. And this to 52. Put 53, sure. Both of these deals should be able to be closed at the end of this episode, after France. As for next deals, I'm going to be dropping this advantage on General Electric. That should fill up both of these lots for two years. And that way we should get three sponsors, like right there and there. Uh, anything else I need to do before I cut and do my magic calculation thingies? All oh, right, check, check in the new specification of tire, maximum resilience, extra two points of grip. That, that could be very useful. I will need to check what is fastest in Germany, but maybe this tire is excellent on Germany. But then again, maybe the soft tire does the trick. Yeah, I don't think I need to do anything else, so I'm gonna cut the recording and I will come back to you when I have done testing. So, see you in a moment. Alright, so back we are. I did testing, first of all. I did not do research points because, as it happens, I will have to do an absurd amount of testing miles and I do not want to do an absurd amount of testing miles. Uh, in theory, I have a limit of 100 miles to do, but I decided to break that rule because uh, enter entertainment value. I'll try to follow that rule when we actually have a solid base to work on. Actually, let me break that rule, but I institute the rule that I only have 60 personnel everywhere except commercial. <laughs> that way I balance things out. The good thing is miles on this testing session are cheap, so not much happened. 50, 50, 90, 10 for the boys, and we get full setup and full development. The next car issue is Overseer in slow corners. Okay, that's not that big of an issue. That That is easily fixable. I will set this up 
uh, in between uh, recordings because of course I have to do my testing to make sure I have the proper driver orders, orders and stuff but I will adjust that in between sessions. Um, anything else I need to do? I need to check if these set of hard tires are better than the soft They probably are. They probably are better than the soft tires I am planning to run. But at least for once, we get an upgrade. Now, everything I need is Asia Tech developing a more powerful engine. Like, level five on power, that will be just enough. That's everything I ask. Anyway, um, let me prepare for testing. I'm gonna give Alonso the hearts, Ronaldo the softs, the proper hearts, the, the, the spec 2 hearts. And let me confirm the setup right here. And the reason for. Uh, we're gonna have. It's just script, it doesn't matter. So, uh, to me, the French Grand Prix, despite me having the objective of winning it at some point, today is not the year to win the French Grand Prix. And for that reason, I treat the French Grand Prix as a burn Grand Prix. And the reason for that is that I simply do my testing to get setup points, and I simply do not use those points for France, electing to carry them over to, if memory serves, the British Grand Prix, where we can actually use five points each driver in rain, because if it rains, I want to have an advantage. So there's that. I'm not going to use any setup points for France. I'm going to carry them over to Britain, and if possible, I'm going to have even more setup points for Britain by doing testing, and then I can have a total of 10 points in both, if, just for Britain. And Britain, you know, I want to do well in Britain. Anyway, I will do my testing as per usual, seamless transmission, uh, transmission, transition into the race. So, I'll see you there. Let me save again because I'm paranoid. See you there. All right, we're ready for the French Grand Prix. I just hope for a good result today. Um, from my testing, uh, it seems the soft one stop is the fastest one, but I decided to test the harder anyone anyway, and the reason for that is that I want to push beyond 36 laps. I want to push something like 40 laps, and while the soft can do that, it is dead by that point, and it just performance is dead. So 27 degrees, overcast conditions, low wind speed. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna give Alonso the one-stop strategy this time around, and I'm gonna give Bernoldi the two-stop strategy. Yeah, that seems, that seems okay. So let's get in there. Let's see what the boys can do. I'm putting my hopes on Bernoldi, putting down a good performance to see where we are. The the upgrade gave us like a thousand extra performance points. We should be better than Jordan now, but only way to find out is hitting the track and what best way to do it than on that on our home track. So let's get in there, see what happens. So it will be mixed results with the new upgrade. Mika Hakkinen once again puts it on the pole. Then it's Barrichello, then the Michael. This time he actually did perform. I'm pretty sure Ferrari brought upgrades to this race. Uh, I confirmed that McLaren, Williams, uh, Sauber, Benetton, they all brought upgrades, so it's gonna be harder to catch them. So anyway, uh, continue running down the results. Weber's fourth, physical a fifth, Coulthard her sixth. Cool her is beginning to fall off, which is concerning for him. Then we have Panis and Alesi, French locking down the, uh, this is the fourth row of the grid. Then we have Raikkonen and Tarso Marquez, 11 for Bernoldi, 16-7, very close to a Williams and a Sauber, but you know it wasn't softs. Then you have Montoya and Saracen, and then you have Alonso with a 17-4, 7 tenths lower, but he wants on the hard tires. Then you have the rest of them. I'm pretty sure we are now faster than Jordan. And we should confirm that during the race. I mean, five, five tenths with hard tires, which is the same tire the AI runs. We're probably faster. So it's gonna be dry race at low wind speed. That's pretty good for our car. Alonso running the hard tires is gonna run 42 laps. Yes, 42 laps. Why that number? I just came up with it. 
the fastest strategy, let's be honest, is actually running to lap 36 and then uh, beating 36 more laps. That's does the that gets us the most efficient use of our tires. Will be the most optimal. I'm not gonna run that because I want to overcut people. But the fuel penalty is pretty harsh. So you know what? Let's just go to lap 38 and overcut people a bit, not that much. Bernoldi is going to go 25 laps. Maybe I fuel him for more laps in his second, in, in his first stop, but we'll see how it goes. 25 laps first and second stint, then 22 laps in the final stint. Alonso, Bernoldi both are ready, so let's, let's try to put down a good show in front of the home crowd, who will probably will be cheering Panis and Alessi more than Prost. We'll gain their love in future years, don't worry. As per usual, save. And make sure race speed is at 100. At times that changes for reasons unknown. Okay, let's see. How many places will we lose off the start? How many places? Let's see. Why? How do you swap? How do you on? Oh no. First things first. Let Bernoldi through, please. Stop playing around. This is the worst possible case. Please let Bernoldi through. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, worst case scenario has occurred in which we lose a ton of places. Okay, let's try to right this ship. Let's try to ride this ship. As per usual, we get poor race starts. Just gotta have to deal with it. We got no choice. Okay, Bernoldi, I need you to start gaining places. I don't care that much for Alonso. Alonso's on a one-stop. He's probably not gonna have that good of a result. You have to be able to overtake a minority, please. Overtake the minority. Good job. You overtook a minority. I'm gonna deal with Alonso in a moment, but I don't want to overcook my brakes. Just, 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 just terrible all around this race start. All right, let's see how far uh, Bernoldi can climb. I'm pretty sure we can get a top ten with this car. It's not a great car, but I'm pretty sure we can nail a top ten somehow, some way. Pass the Minardi, Bernoldi. It's just a Minardi. Actually, I'm going to give you more aggressiveness in terms of racecraft. We don't have time. He did overtake the Minardi. Good. That up there is just a mess. There's a bunch of cars hitting each other. Alonso, please overtake the Jaguar. We don't have time to be dealing with a Jaguar. Even if you're heavy with fuel. Anyway, I'm going to lower Bernoldi's braking and I'm going to lower Alonso's braking to 5. I could lower it further to reduce tire wear but these are the hard tires, the new hard tires we got. The resilience is so high that it doesn't really matter. Once again Mika Hakkinen is just dropping the ball while David Coulthard is surging ahead. He is fourth right now. While Fisichella looks like he's gonna run away with this and he's probably on a one stop or something which you know, it won't surprise me. Let me jack up Bernoldi's breaking again, and I'll see you probably when Bernoldi has to pit or when DNFs happen. <laughs> Imagine there's a, like, this big train here. Imagine there's a bunch of crashes. I mean, all they're fighting is costing them time. We can catch up. We can get there. So I'll see you when that happens. Look, Bernoldi's moving. He has moved up. Let me talk to you about the myth of starting position. I'm pretty sure I was not in the room, I was not recording anything, I just got here and Bernoldi passed a whole bunch of people uh, on this train. Um, I'm pretty sure someone had an accident and we're gonna have a few DNFs in a moment. Now let's get past that Williams. Let me talk to you about the mid of starting position. Yep, there we go, there's a, a Williams dead. There is a VAR that that's the whole reason for the slowdown, but remember Bernoldi started, started this race 22nd, pretty much, after that horrendous lap. He started 22nd. How many people DNF'd? 
just two, okay. He started 22nd. He's now 10th. So, you know, I think in real life, Max Verstappen has proven that uh, starting position is irrelevant. And so have we done others like Hamilton and so on. But Bernoulli right now in a middling car is proving that starting position is nothing but an idea. It's a myth. You can win from 22nd on the grid. Well, he's not going to win, but he's going to have that mentality. John, no. It lost our first Frenchman of the race. Alessi is out. It's going to benefit us. It's going to benefit us because Bernoulli moves up to ninth. But France is crying. And maybe at this rate, if Pan is also the NF, we're going to be the superior French of the year. Why? Because we finished better than the other Frenchmen. I have seen some very, very weird two-stop strategies where they beat in like lap 20 or lap 21 or lap 19. Personally, I think that's a bit too early for that kind of strategy, but if you want to do that and in the long run benefit us, sure enough, you can do that. So Bernoulli is coming into pit. And I'm going to extend his strategy by two more laps. So he takes 27 laps on the same set of tires and then pits. The reason for that is that, as you know, overcuts are very powerful in this era of Formula 1. And tire condition has not dropped at all. Again, I could have done a uh, one-stop on the softs if I so desire. But I didn't want to do that. It looks like Bernoulli is going to get a good stop. I just need the boys to get him ahead of this group. This, this little bunch between uh, who's 20, uh, Irvine and Marquez. Can it happen? Just behind. Uh, well, we tried. We still have fresher tires, so we should be able to be on the back of them. Maybe slow it out with them. Remember, we're actually better than that Jordan. We're actually better than both Jordans. Right now, Alonso is fighting one of them. Bernoulli is fighting the other. Or, well, he's trying to fight the other one. We're losing some pace. Because Alonso was up the back of this BR. Now he isn't. Do not be afraid, Bernoulli. Go get him. Uh, in other news, Alonso has set his tires on fire. The temperatures are on optimal, but that usually increases tire wear considerably. But because he's running hard tires, it doesn't really matter. So it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Start blocking. Can you actually catch him? Okay, drop some braking. I'm not going to cut away from this one until we actually get those positions. Because Bernoulli can go and take those positions. I know what he can do. Physical pits. he's going to give up the position to Michael Schumacher. I think the Michael is on a one-stop. But seeing that physical I just pit there, it means he's on a two-stop which means the Michael's probably going to win this race. The AI one-stop is overpowered in this one. Because they only load like 20 laps of fuel and the AI cannot run out of fuel. Good job, Bernoulli. They just get reset to two or three laps of fuel every time. So they just can't run out of fuel. It's programmed in, into the game. All right, looks like Bernoulli is going to be able to be eight and then get on to chasing that Benetton-Williams battle. Or maybe he cannot do it. He might not be able to do it this lap. No, he won't be able to do it this lap. Okay, so... Hold on. No, he loses the position. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. I'm going to make sure this man overtakes those people. Okay, as Alonso gets ready to pit, it's time for the half race report. And let's see what we got. Uh, we got sunny conditions, if you did not know. But what we also got is Giancarlo Physical leading from Michael Schumacher. Then you had the McLarens of Kulhar, Hakkinen, Weber, and Barrichello are fifth and sixth. Uh, those are them. Yeah, this is Barrichello, this is Weber, this is Panis. Here is Bernoldi looking very good to be able to challenge for that position at some point in the future. Here Alonso is pitting. Clearly the one stop did not work. And then he goes and stalls the car. It's 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 
It's fine, at least the car stall doesn't take that much time. As Alonso takes an extraordinary amount of time getting going. Come on, man, you cannot struggle that much turning on an F1 car. Okay, he's back, but I doubt he's gonna be able to do much. 13 seconds. I mean, he's. He needed a long pit stop anyway, but his pit stop should have been 11 seconds, not 13. But anyway, I think he's gonna finish 11th or 12th, something like that, depending on how much pace he can keep. He should be okay. It's Bernoldi what's interesting to me because. Let's see what's the position. 13.5, 14.4. Occasionally that gap shrinks, at times it grows. I think this was a poor lap by Bernoldi. Uh, just half a second slower than the pace he's usually having, but uh where's okay. Um he might be able to catch up to this fight, especially if there's a decent overcut and he can cut that gap. So he needs to be fast, and if possible, I need one or two DNFs. If that happens, we are going to score a point. And, uh, you know, a point will be very nice in this time and moment. I'm pretty sure that by the end, in Japan, maybe we'll be able to get more points, but I'd rather get to Japan with uh, more points than zero, if you know what I mean. Nope, I think things have stabilized now. Um, Bernold is too fast for the Jordan and the VAR to catch, but he's also not fast enough to be able to glide to the back of this fight right here, of Panis and Barrichello. Maybe things happen and he does. And remember, he's, he was 22nd at the end of the opening lap. He's 8 now. Of course, DNFs happen. Uh, most recently, Ralph blew the engine, and Verstappen broke his suspension after he decided to block for like three laps. So there's that. Anyway, I'll see you later after things get more movement. I just hope that Alonso doesn't drop that much time to Matt Sakane. At the very least, he'll be able to finish 12th. And if this fight gets even more intense, he might be able to catch them later. See this thing right here? That's a dead sentence. Maybe I can have him come in and, I don't know, use tire set number one and maybe I'll be able to save him, but usually when it appears all of a sudden, it, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that happens. Ah, uh, okay, he was literally, well, figuratively on fire on this episode, but he goes on DNFs. I could have used Bernoldi on fire, and he was actually on fire. Um, just, just this time not because of Pete Crone lit him on fire, but because he had amazing pace. But no, he goes on on DNFs. That's stupid electronics. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, all of our hopes are placed on Alonso. Maybe he can salvage a top 10 out of... He'd need one more DNF at least. If I don't think he has to... No. I don't think he's catching Matsakane, so he needs... Or maybe he will be able to catch Matsakane after Matsakane pits for... Tires and fuel. Yeah, he probably just needs one more DNF, but... Bernoldi just DNFing and this time not because of his fault is gutting. That's sad. It is even worse. Alonso was well en route to be able to finish 11th because over here Saracen had lost his tires. I don't know. He had lost a bunch of performance and was falling right into position to be able to be over overtaken by Alonso. Instead, Alonso ends on the gravel because his Asia Tech blew up. Boys, double DNF. Haven't seen that in like 
eight, ten races whenever uh, the European Grand Prix was. But yeah, sad hours. It happened. Uh, let's see, where is physical? Might as well, might, might as well, might as well finish the recording with uh, in the menu, of course, but. Might as well make this a single take with Fisichella about to enter his final lap. So what was supposed to happen is that he was going to be able to overtake this man right here, Sarasan, and he was going to finish 11th because he didn't seem to have the pace to be able to keep up with Matsakane despite having a superior car unless Jordan also brought upgrades, which, you know, that could be an issue. But at the very least, we are building even more upgrades that we're going to throw on the car for Germany. We really need to have a, an upgraded car for Germany because Germany is where you go get points. And I swear to the lords, we're going to get points at Germany. Anyway, it was Fisichella who came out on top this time around, not the Michael as I feared. Uh, the Michael was leading for a time. He is on a one stop. He executed it perfect, perfectly. Physically, I was just too fast. Same with David Coulthard. He actually did pretty well to finish third. Or, well, going to finish third. Physically, does win the French Grand Prix. He, had, he won his first race a moment ago. Now he wins his second ever race. He's getting some good points. He's going to be able to challenge Michael for the, for the championship. Michael's going to finish second. And then third, it's going to go for Coulthard. Fourth is going to be Weber. Then Mika Hakkinen, and then Oliver Panis. Hakkinen turning another pole into, well, points, but not a win. And then you have, we're going to get the rest of them when we reach the race end screen. But this was a pretty sad home race this is unacceptable and now I'm gonna have two damaged cars which is the worst part of this thing what am I supposed to do now so physical does win from Michael Schumacher and David Coulthard rounds out the podium Weber, Hakkinen, and Panis run out the point scorers and then you have Barrichello, Marquez, Irvine and Matsakane in the top 10 our upgraded car was decent, but it DNF'd, so not much you can do. One point separating the Ferrari teammates, and then there's Coulthard seven points away from the championship. And then you have Hakkinen, Alessi, Barrichello, Weber, the rest of them. Ferrari are going to win this championship right away, I guarantee that. Okay, time to assess damages. We made 700k, that's pretty good, nearly 800k. We might need that. We did upgrade the car somewhere. Testing. We have a lot of setup testing progress data that is not being used. Let me use it right now. What's going to happen is that I'm going to do this. 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 And this. I'm going to give Alonso more points than Bernoulli because Alonso is our number one driver after all. Uh, Bordeaux is confused because he wants to do research testing, he's gonna do it on this go. We got stuff, and I know we need spares, don't worry. We, I am the worst manager because of course both of our cars DNF. Please don't say, okay, we're gonna have a deal with Nortel Networks. <laughs> yes. And we're gonna have a deal with General Electric. I told you we're gonna have three deals right away. So, even with the French Grand Prix going terrible, Morale is suffering. No, 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 don't tell me that. Uh, it's not that bad. No reason to, to, to worry about. We shall see, but we're not going to be able to steal anything. Of course, Fisichella adds another race win, and they to totally crushed the opposition. Frost had a nightmare race, indeed. Uh, Fisichella is already throwing shade at Michael Schumacher, which... I don't recommend. Ferrari has gone into partnership with Honda. I love this game. Uh, fastest lap by Fisichella. Nigel Stepney is going to be AR. Just be careful with whatever powders he has. But yeah, of course he's done. Frost is not performing as strongly as it did last year. Is the team in decline? It is. We are at the bottom of the curve. We need to be at the bottom. We need to be at a minimum to be able to get to a maximum. 
So don't worry, we're gonna get better. And of course, we're the worst manager. He's a bunch of driveries in there. Williams already has completed their sponsorship package. Good for them. Okay, what can I do here? Hire more commercial. What can I do here? Can I get? Okay, can I get another good? Yes, I can. So keep moving people up the ladder. Keep moving them up. Uh, let's see. We're gonna fill this. We're gonna fill engineering. It's desperately needed. And no, I'm probably not gonna be able to try it anyway. We have cash. I know. So two excellence. Drop two of them to get two goods there and three goods there. I'm not gonna change the amount of trainees. Even though I could. You know what? It's just good. I'm gonna change the amount of trainees. I'm going to have at the very least 20 trainees so that it is more likely we get stars. Because stars only happen uh, rounded down to the nearest 10. So 10, 20, 30, and so on. So here in commercial, I'd rather move this to 30, and it is indeed to 30. I might be able to move it to 20, but later. Here I want to move it to 30, here I want to move this to 30, it is on 30 already, I'm gonna move it to 20 later, and here I'm going to move this to 20. So what to do now? That's going on decently. Gonna prove that, we need that upgrade for the next Grand Prix. This is the part that concerns me, we have some damage cars, of course. I need to build spare parts. I'm going to build three spare parts and this is gonna cost a ton of money. But it has to be done. I'm going to build another race car. 800k, that's pretty much everything we made on the last one. But it is there. Which is the least damage car number three. So I'm gonna repair the damage on one of the cars. I'm gonna fully kit out car number three. No, I cannot do that. Actually, I can do that. I have another car. So car number three and car number four are fresh to go, are ready, completely ready to go. Alonso gets car four and Bernal, uh, Bernal gets car three. Bordeaux gets car one and unable to test properly. Good. Okay, let's see, what do we have? Um, we sign with Loctite, yes. One deal is done. We sign with Nortel, yes. And we sign not with Elf, but with General Electric. We only need one more cash sponsor, and it's definitely gonna be LG. I don't remember how much I need here. But I'm gonna take it safe, I'm gonna put 50. That is excessive, but that should be enough to get us two blocks. Everything else is going on to Lucky Strike. And then it's gonna move to Reynolds because 7.5 million, it's kinda harsh. <sighs> I'm, I'm a bit disappointed at the overall result. Will we possibly get, of course not, of course not. Why will we be able to do that? That will be too easy. It is, it, overall, in terms of sponsorship, it was good. We got upgrades, which is also good. But it could have been so much better, man. So much better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this particular episode and my suffering at France. I hope to see you there on the next episode where I hope the British Grand Prix ends up being a good one. See you there. Comment, like, subscribe. Support me on coffee if you so desire, you know, the usual YouTuber stuff. And I hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye. And safe again, for good measure. Goodbye.